I'm, I'm, I wanted to say a few things about um, from seeing, watching what's happening in the state level right now from this point of view, from this vantage point. Because as I read editorial after t- editorial demonizing politicians, I need to uh, make clear the point that there are some of us out here who understand exactly who we represent that we represent families and we represent children and we represent constituencies who rely on our judgment when we come down here to do the best we possibly can for the people that we're supposed to keep safe. And right now, um, a responsible approach, a balanced approach to solving budgetary issues right now is critical. It's the only thing that we, it's the only thing that we can stand up and go to sleep at night and say that we actually support it. We are in a crisis. We're in a crisis right now. And for someone who started my legislative career with an impeachment and, be, and is ending my first legislative cycle in a full-on budget crisis, it, it is, it's been a heck of a time to say, you know, hello, I'm now that dirty word called a politician. Because really what I am is P.J. Cameron and Ryan's mom. I come to work every day as a senator because I'm a mother. And if I'm going to protect this for them, I have to protect it for all the children in the state. And we cannot afford to continue to do phantom economics and voodoo accounting and balance this budget on the backs of the very people who need us the most. Their backs are broken now. Their backs are broken. They can't sustain it any longer. And I know that when I came here, I said that I was going to do everything I possibly could to make sure that people who didn't have a voice could have a voice through me. So it's very difficult for me to stand there and watch a budget that I know or watch proposals that I know won't do anything to solve the crisis that we're in. We're in a crisis and we need to start acting like it. We can no longer sustain the way we fund government. It's not enough anymore. And there are folks who refer to these constituencies as tax eaters. I call them tax payers and they deserve the support and the protection that we as a state promise them. When it comes down to making sure that people can wake up in the morning and live their full and productive lives, which is something we say we're supposed to do in the Constitution. We say that the state of Illinois is supposed to support all people to live their full and productive lives. It's in the preamble. We haven't been doing that for the last 25, 30 years, behaving as though the crisis wasn't coming, turning and looking away, passing it on to future legislations. Every single tax increase that has ever happened in this state has happened in a bipartisan manner. Every single one. So when we have everyone on that side of the aisle saying no, no to families, no to children, no to social services that keep our most vulnerable people safe, we are playing politics with people's lives. So it's easy to stand up and make big, huge, nice, flowery speeches about what it is we're not going to do. And we have to make sure that we handle the, the fraud and the waste and the corruption. We absolutely do. And we have to do that so that you understand that funding government is the right thing to do. But as legislators, we need to be able to multitask. Moms do it all the time. We need to be able to do more than one thing at one time and understand the fact that at the end of the day, we can't create jobs or stabilize this economy if we don't address this issue. We can't. It'll be one more speech. It'll be one more day. It'll be one more year that goes by where we don't do what's right for the people we say we're here to serve. And I, for one, am not willing to do that. If there was ever a time, if there was ever a time when doing what was right needed to trump what we thought was doing what was safe, now's the time. Now is the time to do what's right for the people we say we're here to protect.